In this episode, I'm going to teach you how to fix your butt link. I want you to have the capability to fully move the way your body was designed to, right? Jump up ahead, I'll take you back to where my problems lie. Get trouble, younger daughter, done some shit that made my mama cry. Out to the heavens like I'm blessing for I know he's lost. Caught in the trance and this manic depression settled in. Living in the fantasy world. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Dr. Aaron Horton from Squat University, and this is episode 22 of the Ask Squat You Show. Hope you guys are having a great week so far. I think you'll like this episode. Let's get to today's question. Adrian writes, how do you fix butt wink at the bottom of a squat? All right, so today's topic is butt wink. Now let's first talk about exactly what butt wink is. Mechanically speaking, butt wink is an excessive pelvic movement that takes place at the bottom of a deep squat. So as you go into a deep squat, basically the pelvis goes from a neutral position to a posterior pelvic tilt. And this excessive movement is called butt wink. Now, why is this such a problem? Well, if we have a loaded barbell on our back and this movement at our pelvis is excessive, it can lead to a lot of pressure on your low back, which theoretically over time could lead to an injury like a bulging disc. So obviously when we're looking at squat mechanics, we want to maintain as much of a neutral pelvis and flat low back as possible. So decreasing the amount of any butt wink is optimal when we're talking about squat mechanics. So before I show you how to fix your butt wink, we need to talk about three big factors. First, what exactly is happening at the hip joint? Well, your femur is hitting its anatomical end range, which is pulling the pelvis into a rotation. When it reaches that end range, it can't go any further, and instead of actually hitting or pinching the front of it, which is called an impingement, it actually just pulls the pelvis underneath into a posterior pelvic tilt. This is something that can't actually be fixed. You can try changing your stance width, but besides that, you can't necessarily change your bones. So to a point, a large portion of butt wink is going to be normal for some people. The second thing is the hamstrings do not play any part in butt wink. Now why is this? The hamstrings are a bi-articulate muscle. This means that they cross both the hip joint and the knee joint. As you squat, the hamstrings lengthen on one joint and shorten on another. So basically, they don't change much in length during a squat. What this means is that the excessive pelvic movement at the bottom of a squat, which is butt wink, is not caused or cannot be caused by the hamstrings because they're not changing in length as you go down. Now, yes, stiff hamstrings can lead someone to start in a very posteriorly pelvic position, but it cannot cause the excessive movement at the very bottom of the squat, which is called butt wink. The third thing is ankles. How does ankle mobility relate to butt wink? Well, if you have stiff ankles, it is going to cause excessive movement at the hip joint during the descent of a deep squat. So if you have more ankle mobility, it allows your body to sit deeper with less effect or needed movement at the pelvis and low back. For this reason, while we can't modify your actual hip joint like we talked about in the first factor, we can improve often on ankle mobility and therefore potentially decrease and completely get away with the amount of butt wink a lot of people show. Today I'm going to use myself as an example. So far this morning I've been sitting on my couch blogging all morning, so I'm a little stiff. So I'm going to show you exactly the amount of butt wink that I show on my first deep body weight squat of the day. and how that is improved or decreased the amount of movement there when I have a good ankle mobility warm up. So first body weight squat of the day, no warm up at all. Now I'm going to go through just a generalized ankle mobility warm up and we're going to see how it affects my level of butt wink. Now before we do that we need to screen ankle mobility and see exactly what I need to do. Now this is a simple test I've shown before called the five inch wall test. You're going to get your foot about five inches from the wall. For most people if you don't have a ruler a thumb plus a fist is going to be generally about five inches. So position your foot that distance from the wall. Now from here we're going to see can I touch my knee to the wall at that distance without my heel popping up. Now from here on this side yeah, pretty close. I got a little bit of stiffness in the back. Now if I do it on the other foot, I'm not as close. I may be just a little bit off from that wall before my heel wants to pop up. Not only do I have stiffness in the back, but I also have a little bit of a pinch or block sensation in the front of my ankle. 
So what that means is that I need to do some banded joint mobilizations on my left ankle to be able to relieve a little bit of that impingement and I need to do some soft tissue work on both of them. I'm going to show you what that looks like and then we're going to come back and test and see the quality of my squat after that. So first I need to do a banded joint mobilization on my left ankle because I had that pinch or block sensation in the front of it during the 5 inch test. All I'm going to use is a plate and a pretty thick band. I think I got this at performbetter.com. So what you're going to do, put that around the top of the foot underneath your ankle bone that sticks out, your lateral malleolus. And the reason for that is because we need to affect the talus bone, which is on the top of our foot right here. If you put the band up too high like that, you're not actually going to affect the joint mechanics of the ankle in the way that's going to express or help you get more dorsiflexion or more ankle mobility knee over toe. So we're going to put the band on the top of the foot like that. You're going to get a good amount of tension on the band. So we have it on the top of the foot. I can also take my back hand and push it down like that so it's pulling down in the direction that I need to. And from here, I'm going to drive my knee forward. Now because I have the band in the correct position and I have enough tension on it, I've actually relieved that pinching or block sensation in the front of the ankle. All I'm feeling is maybe a tiny bit of stretch back here. It's not as much as a regular ankle stretch, but the main goal is to relieve that pinching sensation in the front of the ankle. I'm holding my knee straight forward. I'm not letting it cave in. Push forward for about 5 seconds and back. I'm going to do about 15 to 20 of those right now and then we're going to go to our next exercise. Next, we're going to do some deep tissue or soft tissue mobilization of the muscles on the back side of your calf. Now, foam rolling has been shown in research to improve your mobility and have no decreases in performance directly after. So it's a great warm-up uh, prior to barbell training. What I'm going to use is a PVC pipe today. It's a little bit thicker or more dense than a foam roller, so it'll give me a little bit added stretch. For some people, that may be a little too painful, so just stick with a natural foam roller. I'm going to go one foot at a time. I'm going to pick my hips up. I'm going to go nice and slow up the length of my calf, looking for any stiff spots. If I find a spot that's a little tight, I'm going to sit on it, pause, got my foot on top, applying some pressure downwards. I'm going to pump my foot up and down. I can even do some circles. Basically, my goal is to try to loosen up any stiff tissues that I find. To have an efficient mobilization with a foam roller, you want to do about one to two minutes. You don't need to be doing 20 minutes of foam rolling uh, prior to your workout. A couple minutes is completely fine to help give you that added benefit of improved mobility, um, again, without any decreases in performance. So we're gonna do about a minute to two minutes on each one of my legs, and then we're gonna go on to our next stretch. The last thing we're gonna do is just a very good stretch for the muscles on the back side of the leg. This is a simple stretch that almost anyone, no matter your level of mobility, can perform. What you're going to do is find a bench, you're going to put your leg on top of it like this. You're going to use your body weight and even your hand if you need to, to push your knee forward as far as it can go until you feel a really good stretch on the back side of your calf. From this position, I want you to hold it for about 30 seconds. That's going to give you a great stretch, but not decrease your performance when it comes down to training. So we're going to drive your knee forward, lean into it, you can even grab the bench right here. From here I feel a really good stretch in the back of my calf and we'll hold it for about 30 seconds. I'm going to do three of these on each side and then I'm going to recheck the bodyweight squat. Alright, so let's go ahead and recheck that 5 inch wall test to see if we made any mobility gains, which is the change we desire. So, thumb and fist away from the wall. Where am I at? Easily touch. Let's go left side. Remember this was the side that had that blocked and pinch sensation in the front. Easily touch, no longer have that pinch sensation. Let's see how it's affected my movement. Body weight squat after all that ankle mobility work, same stance. See what it looks like. Okay, comparison time. Watch the video on the left and see how excessive the pelvic movement is after about 90 degrees and compare it to the right side. So there you go. I hope this video is able to explain and show you how important ankle mobility can be in decreasing the amount of butt wink you may show during a squat. Now obviously it didn't completely take it away, but it very much so decreased the intensity of it and the amount of movement at my pelvis. The big thing to understand is butt wink is not as big of a deal as many people have made it out to be. To some point, it's natural for some lifters in the bottom of their squat to have a little bit of movement in their pelvis. And as long as it's not excessive when loading a barbell, it's not going to be that detrimental, in my opinion, to the health of your spine. So, hope you guys liked today's video. Question of the daytime. My question for you is how many days a week do you train? 
Most of the time during the week, I try to get in about five or six small sessions of about an hour to an hour and a half, but I know some people do more or less. So my question for you is how many days a week do you train? I want to see your answers in the comment section below. As always, I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. If you are, please share them with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Until next week, guys, happy squatting. Hometown you were on the road doing shows and sold out arenas. You can call me what you want, but you won't ever slow my dreams up. This is the vision of a dreamer. I seem to